Katie here from the Scrappy Sisters and I am up with a layout today for Mixed Media Frenzy. We are scrap lifting an amazing layout by Missy Whitten. I will link the video to that layout down below. Sorry, I don't have a little photo up in the corner for you. I, I completely forgot to include that, but I will link the original video down below. Now I am following Missy Whitty, Missy Whitty, oh, Gosh, I need to use my words properly. Missy Whitten very closely for the, the first part of this video. So she also used a cut file as a template. I am just using a cut file from Paper Issues. And she used a Paige Evans cut file, I believe, Geometric Love Heart. And I'm using a Love Heart as well with sort of a brick type pattern, I would say. I've pulled out a whole heap of different mixed media. So these is definitely the most mixed media I have used on a layout for Mixed Media Fridays, even though it's still pretty contained. Um, I'm starting off with this Vicky Booten Iridescent Shimmer Paste. Um, and I don't know what it's called, but I remember people were referring to it as like the unicorn sparkle one. Um, but it's sort of a tealy color. It's very lovely with the shimmer. And I'm just using some Nuvo uh, silicon spatulas. I was trying to think of the right words there. Uh, and I'm just popping the, the texture paste in a couple of places. And then I'm just pulling out a whole heap of different mixed media, as I said. So I have got some Nuvo embellishment mousse. I've got the um, iridescent shimmer texture paste. And this is the embellishment mousse I've got now. And I've got a light blue color. I was sort of going with some blue kind of themes, I'll be honest. Um, I've pulled out some acrylic paint and some sprays, some mists. Um, is that everything that I've pulled out? I think it is. I don't use, well, I use Distress Oxide mists, but I don't use any ink, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, but I'm just kind of using a whole heap of different stuff now mainly as i said blues but i do include a little bit of this um charcoal -y color embellishment mousse i just thought the darker color might give a little bit of contrast i end up covering most of it anyway or mixing a lot of blue into this anyway with the acrylic paint that i use uh, so you can't actually see a hell of a lot of the darker color and I'm just clearing off, cleaning off my spatula between applications. <laughs> um, so this is the acrylic paint that I'm using. It's a Dina Wakely one, is it? Um, a Dilutions. I think it's a Dilutions paint. I really love that paint. Oh yeah, there you go, Dilutions paint. Uh, and I, it's a beautiful, vibrant blue color. It's really lovely, actually. It's it's great paint. I really like it. Um, I'm not super experienced with acrylic paint, but I do really like that. Here is the Distress Oxide spray that I'm using, just adding a bit here and there. I did decide try to move it around with a paintbrush. I didn't like that look, so I end up, um, I think, uh, splattering a little bit more paint, spraying a bit more paint, just because I didn't love the look of the paint brushed effect. Uh, but I wanted that sort of lighter color. And then I'm coming back in with some more Nouveau Embellishment Mousse. Um, and this is in a darker, more tealy type color, I think. Yeah, here we go. Um, so you can see me there just using my spatula. I'm not minding that all my colors are blending together. That's kind of the point. Um, it, I, I wanted to kind of have it all blended, all the blues sort of smushing together nicely. That's an, a, a technical term, smushing. <laughs> uh, but I definitely was sort of going for the blended look. I know it doesn't look like it, but I promise you once I pull off the stencil, it will all come together. Now, is mine perfect? No. I got a fair amount of bleeding um, underneath the stencil I don't really know how to stop that other than I probably um, certain textures definitely and media definitely worked better in the stencil than others and I got a lot of bleeding with the acrylic paint in particular um, so I guess I could avoid using acrylic paint next time and I would probably get less bleeding also my um, stencil did stick a little bit to the the like the cardstock underneath and it was actually really hard to pull it up 
you'll sort of see me struggling with it a little bit in a minute. Um, and so I don't know how to stop that happening other than maybe I use too much product. You can kind of see me here. <laughs> There's a lot of product on there. Um, and I, I wanted a lot of product because I wanted the kind of texture, you know, to the, to the layout. Um, but I think it didn't help. And so the, the thin um, part of the stencil did kind of rip in quite a few places and stick to my layer in fact I couldn't get it all off I had to cover some of it up with my embellishments and also yeah come back in a bit later with some tweezers and pull off the bits that had stuck and that shouldn't have been there I didn't explain that very well but that, that's essentially what I had to do um, so you can see me here just spraying on mist adding so much stuff so much mixed media looks like a hot mess right now but I promise you once I lift up the stencil it won't um, I am quickly wiping off all of my product because the distress oxide mist went everywhere again I could probably edit this out but in actual fact once I have done this mixed media part the layout is very quick to come together um, it was just the mixed media section that took a while. Now, I did also leave it to dry overnight. Um, you wouldn't have to. You could dry it off with a heat tool, but I just wanted to make sure it was nice and dry, and so I did I did leave it overnight. <laughs> um, there's a lot of layers. There's, a, there's some thick uh, stuff on this, like texture paste and embellishment mousse. It's quite thick. And so I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to make sure it was very dry. So you can see me here struggling to lift it up. And you can see already there's a decent amount of bleeding that happened under the stencil, but that's okay. Um, it still turned out lovely. So you can see me there trying to pull up some bits of the stencil that had fallen, uh, peeled off, sorry, and stuck to the bottom. And I'm pulling out some tweezers to try and get that off too. I wanted to leave this part in because I think it's kind of important <laughs> to tell you that it wasn't perfect um it wasn't uh yeah it wasn't without its difficulties this technique um but I am really happy with how it all looks look at it, it looks great doesn't it I'm really happy with it um and I'll definitely do this technique again so here I am it's actually the next day um, I've got this really cute photo of my son and my partner walking along our street my son's got his walker so he wasn't walking unassisted at this point but he has you can't you won't be able to tell because the photo is so small he has got the biggest grin on his face while he is walking down our street with his dad behind him it was just the most adorable photo um, and so I really wanted to document this because we just sort of, he was getting a lot more confident with his walker and we were getting close to walking, although he didn't walk until he was about, um, how old was he? Uh, 14 months, 13 months, something like that. He was over one when he walked for the first time. It feels like a long time ago, but he's only 18 months old now. So he hasn't actually been walking for that long, um, but you wouldn't know it to look at him. He's a pro a pro at it now. Uh, so I'm backing the photo with a couple of layers of pattern paper. I am using Paige Evans' Whimsical collection. I am You'll see this collection come up a lot uh, this month because I am actually trying to use it all up. Um, I am close, uh, but I'm not quite there. But you will see me use it a lot, particularly for my last few layouts for the month. So I do apologize that I'm using the same collection, but I am really trying to work through it. Um, I say this in every video. I know I say this in every video, but I am trying really hard to use what I already have. Am I buying new product? Of course I am. Um, am I trying to not buy as much new product? Yes. I'm trying to be a bit more, um, I guess, conscious of my purchases. Um, and, you know, I've, there, there's beautiful collections that come out all the time. And do I want them? Absolutely. Um, but I'm trying to Think about what I already have in my stash and, you know, make sure it complements my stash or maybe it's something that a collection that I kind of haven't seen anything similar and I'm really enjoying it or, you know, something like that. I, I do often pick up a, a boy collection every now and again uh, because that's something I don't have a huge amount of in my stash. And obviously I have a little boy. I scrap a lot of photos of my partner and my son. So I do try to pick up those. Um, but as you can see here, I am happy to use florals and I guess what people might term more, more girly items on layouts of my son and my partner. I have absolutely no problems with that in the slightest. <laughs> 
So I popped down those three embellishment clusters and then I actually edited out the part of me sticking it down. This video was going to be a little bit long, so I edited that part out. Um, but I have created those three embellishment clusters. Now I fussy cut all of these flowers from a couple of Paige Evans papers um, and I just pulled out the sort of blue, tealy, green florals and I used those. And then I've pulled out these um, green sparkly glitter thickers now they might be from a chamel thicker pack but they're older and i don't exactly remember um, but i went for the word smile because as i said my son has the biggest smile on his face <laughs> um, he's so proud of himself and I'm just thinking that I might like to include something else on this layout. I didn't want to include a whole heap of embellishment because I wanted the mixed media to really, you know, be the feature. But I just needed something. So I'm doing a little bit of a ripped edge and I'm adding a tiny peak of pattern paper again in the blue tones, the blue and teal tones. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of rough up the edges a bit and stick that pattern paper down. And then I'm going to come in with some love hearts and some splatters and we are pretty much done. Um, so make sure you go and check out all the other lovely ladies that are joining us for Mixed Media Frenzy. I will have all of their channels linked down below. Um, there should be quite a few of us, I think. Um, there tends to be about five, I think there's five or six of us who do our videos every week. Uh, so definitely go and check them out because they will all have different but I imagine quite similar takes on this layout. Missy's video was so good in showing us kind of the exact technique that she used so I imagine most of us have probably done something fairly close to what Missy's original layout was. Her layout will be linked down below if you want to go see Missy Whidden in at her finest. If you're not already following her and you love mixed media definitely give her channel a subscribe um, because she's wonderful with her mixed media. Um, I'm adding these puffy hearts, as I said. These are from, hmm, they came with hearts and stars. Is it Pink Fresh, maybe? I've got a few packets of them, actually. I don't know I don't know how I ended up with so many packets of them, but I was trying really hard to use some up because I've got so many. Um, and, you know, again, trying to use my stuff um, and not, not hoard things. They might as well go on my layouts. Um, but, yeah, really happy with how this all came together. And I do have three clusters of I mean four clusters of hearts sorry which I know defies the visual triangle but I just wanted something to go down at that paper torn paper edge just and I thought the three little hearts were super cute so I added those and then I'm coming in with some I don't actually I think I've used the navy Heidi Swap color shine and then I'm pretty sure I've used the, I don't remember the exact color or what the exact color is called, but it's the black to stress oxide. Um, but I don't remember what, what its actual name is. <laughs> uh, but I've come in with that as well, just to add some darker kind of splatters to this layout. Um, I figured the navy, once I'd splattered the navy on, it definitely wasn't really going to stand out too much on its own. It blended in quite a lot. Uh, with the background and if you don't already have the navy Heidi Swap color shine it dries actually quite light um, with a really lovely shimmer I've, I've said this before if you watch my channel the navy is my favorite Heidi Swap color shine and it is probably my favorite mist that I've used um, that doesn't stop me using it though I don't mind if I run out of it because it really is lovely and I love to put it on my layouts um, but it does dry quite light so I've also come in with this darker black color in the Distress Oxides just for a little bit of, um, just a little bit of difference. Now the close-up photo is coming so you can see this. It is really beautiful. I'm really happy with this. Definitely go and check out Missy's original video and all the other ladies' takes on this week's challenge. Um, I can't wait to see what they all come up with. Um, but yeah, everything will be linked down below. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. All right, guys. Bye.